guys, it's Vic, and welcome back for the September Q&A. Where did the month go? One thing's for sure, it wouldn't be another month gone by without a Q&A, right? I'm back in my job now, a lot of you are back in class, and I may or may not have bought like a dozen pumpkin munchkins today and ate half of them before I started recording this. I ain't talking about But now it's time to give you guys some fresh new answers, so enjoy! Logan asks, I need to ask a very important question. Will you ever make a video where it's all puns? This is very important. And I'll say, I haven't done that yet. But one of the things I want to do in the future is make like a series of videos where maybe it's just like all bad jokes related to a certain topic like Splatoon or another game. And while I haven't made a video about like all puns, I did do an April Fool's video once where it was like ad style, but every little question was a hypothetical. And I'll make sure to link that one in the description because it was a good one. <laughs> Toonlank asks, what's your favorite type of bread? And you might expect me to say, oh, a, a bagel, because you know, I am from Long Island and all that. But I'm actually going to say that as good as a bagel is, if I just want like a piece of bread, I'm going to go with like a roll, like just a simple roll. It doesn't have to even have anything on it. Have you ever had like a roll? with nothing, <laughs> but if I can like put something on it, give me like a little bit of cream cheese and a little bit of jelly. Perfect, perfect morning snack. So good. Jose asks, what's your favorite season of the year? This one, this, this one that we're in right now, fall. This is a good one. When I was a little bit younger and I used to have to drive to class, my favorite part of the year would be driving in the back roads and like seeing all the trees like slowly change color over the course of like the first month of semester. It's probably one of the things I miss the most from like going to class, just driving to class, not, not being in class, but just the experience of traveling to class and looking at all like the bushes and the trees. When I used to go to class, I used to take pictures all the time. My Twitter used to be just like a lot of photos of being me being like, hey, look at this pretty tree look at these leaves i don't do that anymore now i just post tons of pictures of my cats oh good timing good timing pastel macaroon says when is the next time we will see your cats so fluffy i want them i, I could i could put this picture on the screen right here look look it's tippy he's my good boy tippy there's a good boy for you there you go there you go it'd be a shame if i put a video like right now right Hi, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> oh, friend? Friend! Blue Butterfly asks, if you could change something about the past, what would it be? I'll give you the silly answer, and I'll give you the serious answer. So we'll start with the serious one. If I could change something, like from high school, I would just want to have started doing things earlier, if that makes sense. I was in chorus and I was in like musicals and things like that, but I didn't join a lot of clubs and I didn't do a lot of like things that showed leadership, for example, because I was like, oh, uh, person A would do a great job at that thing, so I should not do that thing so they can do that thing. And that's a terrible way to think. Don't think like that. And for a silly answer, I kind of just wish I still had all my old fanfics. <laughs> Like, if you're young and you're writing, like, silly things now that you know are gonna be cringy in a few years, don't delete them. They're funny. I still have my old Maple Story channel, but that's, like, one of the only things from my past that I can, like, access super easily. If I ever find any of my dumb fanfics, I, I probably will read them just to be able to laugh at them with you guys. So, uh, fingers crossed. Mystical Gamer says, do you prefer the city or a place in the mountains? Well, I grew up in the suburbs, so I guess I'm not really accustomed to either one. But whenever I go to the city, as I do live decently close to New York City, it just kind of like, as nice as it is, I feel like I wouldn't want to live in the city for the rest of my life. It just feels so crowded and I feel like I'd want some space to be able to do stuff like view the ocean, but I'm biased because I'm also near the ocean. <laughs> so I think between the two, I'd probably go to the mountains because I really like a good nature view over being in the city constantly. So I'd say in the mountains. Cole says, just out of curiosity, do you think you'll be doing any more bootleg Nintendo game videos like you did with Super Splat Dogs? Yes. Absolutely yes. I actually had an idea like a couple weeks ago that I never actually got to where I had even more <laughs> bootleg videos. Actually like bootleg Mario videos for like the Mario release. But then I didn't do it. But I, I could still do the video eventually. Crazy Chuck says, what is your credit card number? I won't use it, I swear. Oh, wait, wait, one second, one second, one second. 
okay, okay. It's uh, it's one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. You writing this down? Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six. I hope you write that down. I'm not gonna repeat it again, and I'm not gonna give you the funny numbers on the back Even if you ask it's seven 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 Nate asks did you take any weird or odd extracurriculars in school? Yes, I did I uh, actually I used to be in a club that we did forensic science We actually went on like a trip to the university I actually ended up going to for like a forensic science like competition the club only survived for the first, uh, like, two years that I was in high school because they stopped funding us in favor of, like, sports teams. And I don't really have any paraphernalia to prove that I was ever in the club, but it was, like, a lot of fun. I remember, like, when I finally went to college, going up and down, like, the stairs at my university reminded me of, like, going up those same stairs to have to, like, do stuff for the competition. And it just, <laughs> it brought back this, like, feeling of, like, oh my god, I had to, to go up these stairs as fast as possible. I gotta bring these samples. <laughs> don't, don't panic. And, like, I just, <laughs> it was a good club. We only had, like, 10 or 15 people tops. But I'm friends with a lot of the people that were in that club. So we all have, like, this shared positive memory of the good times in forensics. Autumn says, it's me, the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon Maniac. What is your favorite Gen 7 Pokemon? And honestly... It's Litten, but I really enjoyed Litten, especially in the anime, and like the fact that he got to like be a good boy for the entire anime, and he made me cry <laughs> in the anime. <laughs> I just I like him a lot. I think it's the anime's fault that I like Litten so much, but he's good. He I I, I named I named my Litten in my game Tippy, cause he's a little black and red cat. He's good. I love him a lot. He's thinking. What is he thinking about? Something. Something bigger than any of us. Cake says, at how many subs do you want before a face reveal? Uh, at least like, at least like five. Can we get like five? You know, it'd be really cool if you subscribe to this channel right now while watching this. Then you might see a face reveal. Aiden asks, who is the laziest cat out of all your cats? Uh, this one. <laughs> You wouldn't think it, but he's really lazy, actually. He just, he just, he's cute! He's cute! But doesn't mean that he's accomplishing much a lot of the time. Looney, like many, seems to be stuck in that S plus to low X tier, and it's, it's a real big pain to get out of there. Cause like, when you first get to X for the first time, you end up in this crazy land where half the people are really, really good, and like, half the people are people that are still kind of trying to figure out things. And sometimes it's all the people are trying to figure out things. I think the best way to increase your awareness a little bit quickly is like to get in the groove of actually opening your map. Like, I know it sounds stupid and everyone's like, oh, of course I open my map. But how often are you opening your map? Are you opening your map like when you die to check stuff? Or are you opening your map even when you're like walking around? Cause you can see where people are planning to push if you just open it for a second. Take a little look and then move yourself to where you think people are going. If you have yourself one step ahead of your opponents, it might be enough to stop them from pushing. The hardest thing to do in ranked is actually defense and not offense. Like it's easy to get splats, but it can be hard to like keep yourself from falling apart. So if you can give your teammates a little bit of extra support by being in the right place at the right time, you might end up finding yourself winning a couple more games and being able to keep that X rank a little bit better. The not 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 asks, if somebody told you that you could no longer use the machine, what weapon would you use? Honestly, I would just go back to using the custom jet. The custom jet squelcher was actually the first weapon that I played in competitive. It was the weapon that I tried out for my first team on, and it has a very near and dear place to my heart. Also, before the custom jet came out in Splatoon 2, I pretty much only played the regular jet. Because in my mind, I was like, oh, there are so many new people. That means that they're all going to play silly short-range weapons, and I'll be able to beat all of them with the long-range gun. <laughs> And then actually, a friend of mine was super into buckets and totally changed my mind. And I was like, you know what? Maybe instead of being a one-trick jet, I should try and learn other things. And that's kind of what led to me doing videos about various weapons instead of just sticking to one thing or streaming with one thing. And I think I have a lot more fun this way now. So I'm really happy playing whatever I want. Lucky J asks, would you add any new typing in Pokemon? And honestly, while I can't like think of any typing off the top of my head that I'd want, 
I think I'd want them to add like a couple more typings that have either like advantages or disadvantages to fairy type. Just so like fairy type feels like it belongs in the type chart and isn't just like affected by like what like four? Is it like four or five types? And then maybe while we're at it, just let bug type damage do more to more things. I feel like poor bug types still just end up being really underestimated these days. That's probably all I'd do. Hero Star says congratulations! Nintendo just hired you. In order to prove your worth, you gotta remake one game of your choice. What game would you pick and how would you go about doing so? Hmm, uh, what if we take... Super Mario Sunshine and made all of the levels the Sandbird level. Honestly, I'd love to take a game like Kirby's Tilt and Tumble and like put it on the Switch just for the sake of giving it motion controls like properly. I, I feel like a game like that would be really fun. They could like slap like a like a ten dollar sticker on it, throw it on the eShop, and then it'd be easy money. People would buy it. It's a cute game. It's good. It Thomas asks, if Splatoon didn't exist, what would be the main focus of your channel? Honestly, it probably would have been Pokemon. Uh, before I was into Splatoon, uh, pretty much all that I watched were various like Generation 6 Pokemon streams. I'd watch people breed, I'd participate in tournaments, I'd do little wonder trade streams with people. I, I really liked Pokemon, I still do. I mean, seeing as my username is literally a Pokemon pun, it's Victoria and Vivian. I feel like I would have been like either a Twitch shiny hunter, or like maybe one of those people who does like fan theories on YouTube. That could have been fun. Maybe I'll do one someday? I don't know, man. I'd love to do like some kind of music content for Pokemon too, but I'm not really sure what yet. It'll happen eventually, I hope. Ivan asks, what is the process to make a video? I, I think it can be broken down into like a few steps. The first one is me getting an idea for a video, which either leads to number one, me writing a script really, really, really fast and getting out a video very quickly, like the Splatfest video, for example. Or if I've got more time on my hands, usually what I'll do is I'll have the idea. And then before I actually start like making a lot of the video, Depending on what it is, sometimes I go and I record the footage first, especially for like the ad videos and things like that. I'll play the weapon first so I can like feel it out, see how it works, and know what happens in my matches so I can write scripts that make sense for the footage that I have, which actually makes like the video feel a lot better because I can like pick clips that match exactly what I'm talking about. If it's not like an ad video or something, I'll probably write and record the script first and then get the footage that I need that specifically matches so I don't like burn a ton of my time. And then I edit, yay! Editing is fun because usually I start with just raw footage and raw audio. I cut down the audio so it sounds nice. I cut down the footage so it looks nice. And then it's like building a giant puzzle and putting all the pieces together and hoping that I have enough footage. And then usually after that, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I like adding little extra music pieces like a Kirby or something like that. And then it goes out to you. And then you watch it like this video. All right, watch the magic. Uh-huh. <gasps> wah, 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 whoa. Oh, it's starting to move away. What do you think about that, Pebble? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? You wanna go get it? You wanna go get it? It's right out of your view. Right there. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes, you know you want to. You know you want to. Yes. <laughs> oh, bye. Ethan says, I have a decent question. When you do song parodies, do you make up the words yourself in a long process or do they come naturally? This one also depends. Sometimes what happens is with a parody song, I might have like a chunk of lyrics like kind of appear in my head very suddenly where I'm like, oh, this would be funny as like a few lines and then I'll like build a song off of those few lines. But other times what I'll do is I'll like paste in the entire script to a song on one side of a Word document and then have the other column blank. And what I'll do is I'll like, I'll fill in the lines bit by bit until I have like a full song. And then I'll see if it like flows together properly. I think one of the best parts about making parodies is getting the words to work and like making it fun at the same time. I really love the process. And Dino Man asks, how do I get good with motion controls and use them instead of sticks? Well, I can tell you dude has uh, quite a few videos about motion controls and getting better with them. The way that I got into using motion, because I actually used to play sticks for a lot of the time in Splatoon 1, was I actually started 
by playing what I like to call hybrid controls, where I would still use the sticks to look around, but I used the motion only to look up and down. And that got me used to motion slowly. And then once I finally felt comfortable with looking up and down, then I started incorporating looking left and right with it. And then over time, it just kind of became more natural. So try doing it like that. Start by looking up and down, and then put in the left and the right when you feel ready. And that might help you get good emotion in a couple of weeks. I hope it helps. Robin Maine just wants to know the strangest dream I've ever had. <laughs> okay, okay. So I start the dream in my bed. Like I wake up. I'm in like middle school, I think. And I get up and I get out of bed. And it's like a third person kind of dream where I'm like watching myself like walk in the hallway. And I like walk into the middle of the hallway and like my dad is standing there and he's like, hey Victoria, are you gonna get ready for school? And I look at him and I say, nope. And I go back to my bedroom and I stand on my bed. Cause you know, that's what I guess like 12 year olds do. They stand on their bed or something. And I look up and above me is a singular little latch. And I pull the latch, and like a ladder drops down, and I climb up through the roof of my bedroom, and suddenly I'm on like a pirate ship. Like a 3D, like CG, <laughs> like pirate ship. And like the, the dream camera like pans out, and it just shows that like the house is gone. We're just a pirate ship on the ocean. And then I woke up, and like, I don't know, my brain just can't like get rid of this like spinning shot of this pirate ship zoom out, like even to this day, I just, I don't understand. I, I wasn't even like a big fan of pirates. I really liked Peter Pan. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm just as confused as like why that dream happened then as like I am now. Like, did I really just not want to go to school? Was I just thinking about pirates? Did I want to be a pirate? I won't know. I, I can't go back 12 up years and ask little Victoria. So now you can ponder with me. Congrats. Paul asks, do you like pancakes? Yes. If so, thick or thin pancakes? I'm gonna say thin pancakes, because if you have thin pancakes, you can eat more of them, you know? Like, if you have thick pancakes, you eat like two, maybe, three maybe, and you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm feeling kind of full, I can't finish this plate of pancakes. But if you have like, a lot of thin pancakes, you'll probably get through like, a few more before you realize, oh hey, maybe I ate too many. And then you get to have more pancakes overall. Yay! Also with thin pancakes, you could like put more things between the layers, like chocolate chips or like blueberries or something. You could like make a whole big thing out of it. With a thick pancake, you don't have as many options. Isaac's trying to be a funny guy. He says, this is an answer. But what was the question? What is an answer? Get it? Because then you ask, what is an answer? This is an answer. But what was the question? Red Spy asks, next Splatoon one stream when? Uh, uh, let's go. Let's go with this month. That one right there. That's that's looking like a good month. Let's do it uh, somewhere over here. Yeah. <laughs> what is a weapon in Splatoon one and two that I like but I could never use? The range blaster. <laughs> in Splatoon one, it would always like obliterate me when I played dual squelcher, and I just never understood how to play it properly. And in Splatoon two. I just, I just don't play it. I watch other people play it, and they still obliterate me with it. Times don't change. Marty asks, will my question be answered? Yes. <laughs> Does that count? If you want your questions answered, just like this one. This, this one, this one right here. This, this question right here I just answered. Leave them in the comments below. And maybe they'll get included in October. Ooh. Maybe hit up the comments with a couple of spooky ones to get into the holiday spirit. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you properly on a Thursday next time. I hope. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>